Let's discuss the process of installing an eddy current sensor, also known as a proximity probe or displacement sensor. When installing eddy current sensors, there are some best practices that should be followed for safety and protection of equipment. Preparation for installation of the sensor includes clearing any obstructions from the location for the sensor. This includes physical obstructions as well as cleanliness, to ensure that foreign matter does not enter the asset. It is a best practice recommendation to keep the sensor probe protected to prevent any damage during installation or in the case of an accidental drop. This cover may also be used as a guideline during installation. If the distance to the target is not known and the machine is not open, the sensor may be inserted until touching the target, mark the position on the threads, remove the probe and the protective cover. Now, when the sensor is inserted, we have a mark that will help us ensure that we do not cause damage contacting the target. From this point, we should now be able to use voltage values to ensure a proper gap is set. Once ready to install the probe, remove the base of the sensor. This component provides the seal against any oil leakage and a passage for the sensor to the target. Remove the protective cover from the tip and replace once the base part has been removed. Install the base of the sensor into the proper access port and hand tighten. This piece has a 3 quarter NTT diameter and is adjusted using a 30 mm wrench. Tighten the base snugly in the access port. Next, remove the protective cover from the tip of the sensor. As you can see, there is a length of the sensor that is not threaded and will pass through the base into the asset. When installing the sensor, carefully pass it through the installed base until the threaded portion has engaged in the base. If the machine is physically open, as in this example, we can see the sensor as it approaches the target. When installing the sensor, be very careful not to damage the pigtail wiring of the sensor. Damage may occur if the pigtail is used to screw the sensor into place. By marking the estimated length of the sensor using actual dimensions or the previously mentioned methodology, the physical position of the sensor is roughly known. Being cautious, the sensor will be hand-tightened only. This allows the installer to ensure that the sensor is installing freely and is not bound in any way. Since this machine is open, it is easy to see that the sensor is moving freely and has no obstructions in the way. We can also monitor the approach to the shaft, again ensuring that the sensor tip does not get damaged. Once the sensor is gently touching the shaft, back out a couple of turns. This ensures that there is a gap between the sensor tip and the shaft. At this point, the sensor may be connected to the remainder of the sensing chain, the extension cable and converter. The converter itself drives the proper operation of the sensor and is powered by the installed field device that will monitor the asset. A voltmeter may now be used to verify the proper operation of the eddy current sensor and to adjust the sensor for proper operation and validation of the calibration curve. Eddy current sensors are provided power with a negative polarity up to minus 24 volts. Voltage is inversely proportional to the gap between the sensor tip and the target. As the sensor is moved closer to the target, the voltage is less negative, and as the sensor is moved away from the target, then the voltage is more negative. Typically, sensors are gapped at a voltage reading of minus 10 volts. That would equate to an air gap of 50 thousandths of an inch. That would look like this. It is important that when a sensor is being installed, that the installer understands these concepts. In most cases, the asset will not be open as in this case, and these precautions need to be followed to prevent any damage, especially when you do not have the ability to visually monitor the sensor installation. Thanks for watching this brief instructional video.